Welcome to section 15.8, where we're going to be looking at triple integrals in spherical coordinates. So spherical coordinates have some similarities to polar and cylindrical that we've seen previously, um, but some distinct differences as well. So in spherical coordinates, we're going to have an ordered triple where the first coordinate is rho. So I know it kind of looks like a, like a curvy letter P. This is a Greek letter rho. So it's rho, theta, and then phi. So another Greek letter. So rho, theta, and phi. This is where rho is the length of OP. That's the distance between the origin and the point P. So you can see on the diagram here. It's basically like the radius of the sphere in spherical coordinates. So rho is the distance from the origin to P. Theta is the same as in cylindrical coordinates. So theta is telling us how far around the z-axis we should be going. And then phi is the angle between the positive z-axis and the line OP. So that's this triangle right here. So this one is an important one um, to have a distinction for uh, because uh, phi starts up here at the positive z-axis. So like theta is down here. That's theta equals zero and it goes around like that. Phi starts up here pointed vertically and then it comes down and goes around like that. Now we need to take note that, so note rho, because it's representing a distance, um, it must be greater than or equal to zero, just like r in polar and cylindrical. And phi, even though it's an angle, it doesn't go quite the same way that theta does, uh, because theta goes 0 to 2 pi. Phi only goes from 0 to pi. So, and why that is, because um, if you go to the negative z-axis down here, phi goes around like this. So you get this set of angles here. If you want to hit a point that's over here somewhere, then you should rotate the theta value to point this direction and then bring phi down this way. Okay, so we only want the acute angles for phi. We don't ever need to take it past pi because if you're going to go all the way like to over here, instead of doing that, get rid of this part. Again, rotate theta and then bring phi down to wherever that point is. Okay, so phi always going from 0 to pi, not 0 to 2 pi. Cylindrical coordinates were useful when you have symmetry about an axis, um, like a cylinder. Spherical coordinates are useful when you have symmetry about a point, which is very much like a sphere. So here we have some common types of surfaces that can be described using spherical coordinates. Um, the first one, of course, is a sphere. Um, the equation of the sphere would just be rho equals c, where c is a constant. Okay, Because basically you're just setting up the radius to be a specific value, and then that radius value goes all the way around right, at every point there. The next one we have over here, this one is, it looks like a plane. It's actually not an entire plane. It's a half plane. And it's a half plane because to get this surface, we have to fix theta equal to C. But if we do that, theta goes out, you know, to here, to where this angle is. So theta equals C, just like on this one rho was equal to c. If theta equals c, the angle points out this way. It doesn't also point back that way. That would be a different angle that we'd have to go around to. So it's just a half plane. Uh, and then we have, for both of these, notice this is um, a cone, a circular cone. But really what it gives us is a half cone when you let phi be equal to c. 
So if we fix phi to be constant, so phi comes down from the vertical z-axis up here. So it goes down until it hits the outer edge of the surface. So that would be phi equals c. Same thing here, we start up here at the vertical z-axis. We go down until we hit the surface. The difference between these two is that in this one, the cone up above the xy plane, right? the phi angle would have to be between 0 and pi. So this is with, oops. so if c, if that angle is between 0 and, sorry, pi over 2. 0 and pi over 2. Not including, because if c, if it, the angle was 0, that's not a cone, that's just a straight line. And if c is pi over 2, it actually is the entire xy plane down here. So it becomes a plane instead of a cone. And then this one, once you pass the xy plane and you go down here in this direction, then you're going to get the values from pi over 2 to pi. In terms of conversions, there's going to be some similarities and some differences, like with a lot of this stuff. So x is going to be rho sine phi cosine theta. y is rho sine phi sine theta. z is rho cosine phi. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared, right? That's the spherical equation here. These equations look, especially these two, look particularly uh, daunting. But they get a little bit simpler if we just make a note that R, that radius value for the circle that we've seen in polar and cylindrical, R is just rho sine phi. So really, what's happening in these formulas, if you just picture this is rho, or excuse me, R, and this is R, we get x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. It's exactly the same as polar, right, and cylindrical. It's just that the r has been converted to rho sine phi instead. Okay? So, But if you keep that in mind, the x and the y are the same equations, just in terms of these new variables instead. Okay? And then z, that one's totally new. So um, it's not quite as nice as cylindrical, where z was just z. In spherical coordinates, z is rho cosine phi. Let's take a look at a couple examples. So we're going to kind of ease into this like we did in the previous section. We're going to work with um, some point plotting first. So we have a point 2, comma, pi over 4, comma, pi over 3 in spherical coordinates. Plot the point and then find its rectangular coordinates. So for the graphing aspect of this. So we've got 2 is our radius value. We've got pi over 4 is our theta, and we've got pi over 3 is our phi. So let me do the theta here. Well, no, I'll do the radius first. So radius of 2. So we'll say that's out to here. Oops. So that's rho equals 2. Theta tells us how far around to go. So pi over 4, we're just going to split the difference here. Okay, so theta is pi over 4. And then phi is pi over 3. But remember, positive phi is up here. So we're coming down off of this. So, coming down pi over 3. So this would be pi over 2 if it came all the way down. So pi over 3 is going to be somewhere around there. It's kind of like 2 thirds of the way there. So, let me get... 
that point right there. So this is phi equals pi over 3. And that gives us our point. Now, if we want to convert, going from spherical to rectangular is pretty straightforward. You just use the direct formula. So it's rho sine phi cosine theta. So that's 2 sine pi over 3 cosine pi over 4. So that's 2 times root 3 over 2 times root 2 over 2. So that's root 6 over 2. For y, we have 2 sine pi over 3 sine of pi over 4, which won't make a difference because sine and cosine of pi over 4 are exactly the same thing. So we get also root 6 over 2. Z this time, we're going to have rho cosine of phi, so cosine of pi over 3. So that's 2 times 1 half, which is just 1. So we get root 6 over 2, comma root 6 over 2, comma 1. That is our same point in rectangular coordinates. So root 6 is somewhere between 2 and 3. So we would be looking at, uh, oh, sorry, no, uh, it's root 6 is between 2 over 3. So this number divided by 2 is between 1 and 2-ish, one and, 1 and 1 and a half. So kind of like right around here. And then we go the same value up, and then z is 1. And that puts us at the point right there. So the rectangular coordinates can also get us there. But given the angles, it's, to, it's best described using the spherical. Now, if we want to go backwards, if we want to go from rectangular back to spherical, um, we can use our conversion. So rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So we get rho is the square root of 0 plus, that's 4 times 3 is 12, plus 4. So rho is 4. And then the formulas for x and y both involve rho, uh, phi, and theta. So what we want to do, we only know rho right now. So I want to use the z formula because this one we know, and we know z, so we can solve for phi and then use the, that in one of these formulas to find theta. So we're going to use z equals rho cosine phi. So negative 2 equals 4 cosine phi. So cosine phi equals negative 1 half. So we need the angle that produces a cosine of negative 1 half. And it has to be between 0 and pi. So that does cut down our options. So that's helpful. The only one that fits that bill is 2 pi over 3. And from there, now we know that rho is 4, phi is 2 pi over 3, so we can get theta using either x or y. I'll just use x. So that's rho sine phi cosine theta. x is 0, so that's actually kind of nice. Equals 4 sine of 2 pi over 3 cosine theta. Uh, and actually, yeah, that's really nice because now when we divide, it's just cosine of theta is 0. And the angle with a 
cosine value of 0 is pi over 2. So our point, so rho theta phi is 4 comma pi over 2 comma 2 pi over 3. So that is the same point as the one given above in rectangular coordinates, now found using spherical. So let's take a look at triple integrals in spherical coordinates. So again, I've kind of filled this in already just because it's a, kind of a lengthy formula for you guys to look at. So everything gets converted. X's become rho sine phi cosine thetas. Y's become rho sine phi sine thetas. Z's become rho cosine phi's. And then when you convert into spherical, we're going to pick up this term right here, rho squared sine phi, d rho d theta d phi, with rho going from a to b, theta going from alpha to beta, and phi going from c to d. This rho squared sine phi, um, it's kind of like how in polar we have the r dr d theta. Um, it's not exactly the same because this isn't r, um, but it's derived similarly. And we'll be seeing more in the next section about where exactly this comes from. Um, but for now, we can just know that this needs to be included anytime you convert into spherical coordinates. Uh, this can also be extended, so we can put rho between two functions of theta and phi, so g1 of theta and phi and g2 of theta and phi. Okay, so you can have variable bounds as well. It doesn't all have to be constants. So let's take a look at some examples. So evaluate triple integral over b of e to the x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 3 halves dv. And we're working in the unit ball. So it's everything within one unit of the origin. Okay, the unit ball is like the unit sphere, a sphere of radius 1, but it's everything inside of that sphere. So if we look at finding the formula for the ball in terms of spherical coordinates, rho represents radius that's going to go from 0 to 1. Theta, we're going around the entire sphere, the entire ball. So theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And phi, again, it's the whole ball. We're going from top to bottom. So phi is going from 0 to pi. So for our triple integral, we can go ahead and convert that sum right there is just rho squared to the 3 halves. Oops. And then we include a rho squared sine phi, d rho d theta d phi. And we put the corresponding bounds on there. Uh, the nice thing about the way that this sets up, notice we've got all of the rows right here. We've got the phi's right here, and then there are no thetas. Um, these are all constant bounds. These are all set up as a product of functions of different variables. We can use one of the results we saw from Fubini's theorem to actually split these up. So we can take um, the theta integral, that's 0 to 2 pi of just 1 d theta. We can split these up into the product of single integrals. 0 to pi sine of phi d phi. And then for the rows, get a little cancellation there. So this is 0 to 1 of rho squared e to the rho cubed d rho. Each of those is solvable. This one is just 2 pi. This one, just take an antiderivative and get negative cosine. This one, you need to do a u substitution. Let u be rho cubed, and then you get 3 rho squared. 
for the DU. Um, but we end up getting 4 over 3, sorry, 4 pi over 3 times e minus 1. So that ends up being the value we get out of that. Now let's take a look at the next one down here. This one's got a little more going on with it. Use spherical coordinates to find the volume of the solid that lies above the cone, z equals square root of x squared plus y squared, and below the sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals z. So I wanted to make a note of this. This isn't a 2, this is a z. Um, and because this is a variable, this sphere is not centered around the origin anymore. Um, it's actually been shifted up. And the new center of this sphere is 0, 0, 1 half. So like if I'm on the diagram, it's right there. So that's where our sphere is, right there. Uh, you can find this by completing the square. So basically just move this Z over, complete the square on the Zs, and then you'll get the new equation. So in terms of the region in question, we're finding volume of the solid. So we're going to take the triple integral of 1. So we know how that's going to work. Um, but we need to identify the formulas for these upper and lower bounds in terms of spherical coordinates. So for the sphere, we know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared, and z is rho cosine of phi. So we get rho equals cosine of phi. So this is the equation of the sphere in spherical coordinates. Notice it's not a perfect constant anymore. That's because it has been shifted away from the origin. So like the length of the radius here is different from the length of the radius here. And that length is dictated by cosine of phi now. So that's our spherical equation. For the cone, we have z, so rho cosine of phi equals square root of x squared plus y squared. Um, you could convert this into like the rows, phi's, and thetas for both and then simplify as much as possible. Um, or just remember that x squared plus y squared is the same thing as r squared. And because r, we know, so that's just r, and r is rho sine phi. We can divide away those rows, so we get cosine phi equals sine phi. So we need the phi value that makes cosine and sine equal. There is only one angle where cosine and sine are equal um, in this domain, because remember, phi only goes from 0 to pi. It only goes from here to here. Okay, it doesn't go all the way around. So the only angle that makes that work would be pi over 4. It's the only one where sine and cosine will be equal to each other. So in terms of our setup, so volume of E, it's going to be the triple integral over E of 1 dV. So we're going to get so 1 times rho squared sine phi, because we convert to spherical, d rho d theta d phi. Rho is going from 0 up to the sphere, 
which is cosine phi. Actually, let me space this out a little better. Cosine of phi up there. Theta, 0 to 2 pi. Phi, 0 only down to pi over 4. Only this portion for phi, not any farther. Otherwise, we'd pass the surface. So 0 to pi over 4. So from here, we can go ahead and evaluate that innermost. So with respect to rho, we get 1 third rho cubed sine phi from 0 to cosine phi d theta d phi. From here, so cosine phi, so we get 1 third cosine cubed phi sine phi. If the zero case becomes nothing, d theta d phi. So from there, um, you can do the theta trick on this again. So you're down to a single integral in terms of phi only. And you can set this one. You could do the u sub on this or do like a trig um, identity on this. So... I'll just tell you what we get. When all is said and done, this one works out to pi over 8. So it simplifies down pretty well. Okay, so, But this one is a little unique because we're not all constant bounds here, right? Because that sphere has been shifted up. Um, the upper bound on rho is not like 0 to 1. It's actually 0 to cosine of phi. And then um, we're able to find the bound for phi using the cone. And then theta is just our standard all the way around the circle in this case. All right. And that brings us to the end of section 15.8. Um, so we've only got one section left to go in this chapter. It's going to be pretty different um, than what we've seen before, but it's going to give us a better understanding of where... Um, a lot of these conversions are coming from, how we're working with them so efficiently, um, and get a little bit of the deeper meaning behind all of that. So I will talk to you all in the next and final section of chapter 15.